Psalm 63. 63. Oh God, you are my God, I will seek you. My soul thirsts for fresh longs you and dry thirsts of where there is no water. So I look for you in your sanctuary, power God, because your love and kindness is eternal life. My lips shall praise the dust of bliss who while I live. Lift up my hands and let my soul shall be satisfied with my offense. And my shall praise you with joy for your lips. When I remember you on the bed, I meditate you in the night watch, because you be my help. Therefore, in shadow rings, I rejoice. My soul follows close behind your right upholds, upholds me. For those who seek my life to destroy it, shall go into a lower part of the earth. They shall fall by a sword. They shall portion for jackets for kings shall rejoice in God. Everyone who spares them shall glory. At the mouth of those people's lives shall be stopped. Okay, so uh, Psalm 63 is the, uh, it's in the sixth hour of the Akbir, uh, the fourth psalm. It's also repeated in the uh, first hour, in the first hour uh, of the Akbir. Um, I think the reason for that is, uh, so the first hour, see how he uses the word early, the first verse, early, and like, you know, first hour is, is early, it's the first one. Um, time of the morning um, and the sixth hour as we'll see uh, has messianic uh, themes or references uh, mainly with like thirst um, so the dry thirsty land and uh, Christ was thirsty on the cross and the sixth hour referring to the crucifixion of Christ um, I think that uh, it's important to know, let's look at the title, Join the Fellowship of God, a Psalm of David, the one who was in the wilderness of Judah. Um, I think it's important to note that uh, this psalm has aspects of, uh, of literal, but also uh, 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 not so literal points. So, yes, it's referring to the, he was in the wilderness and... Um, but we'll see some examples in the sun where I think it has a literal aspect, but also a symbolic aspect. Early will I seek you. It's, it's, it's company where we want to say early will I seek you. If you want to seek God, you should seek him early. But another translation in another, uh, another uh, Bible translations is really earnestly. In the NIV, it says, earnestly will I seek you. So it's not just referring to literally early. Uh, it's also referring to being eager, being earnest, being sincere, having a desire. When you're really excited about something or have a strong desire about something, uh, you can't sleep or, or you, maybe you can't sleep, but like you're so excited to do something early in the morning straight away. I'm going to do first thing in the morning. I'm going to seek you first thing. I'm going to do this activity first thing in the morning. So that's the eagerness. That's the immediateness of seeking God, uh, which is very important. We do that. And I think it's foundational. If you start up here in the morning, you're going to, yeah, you may come crashing down a bit, but if you start up here, uh, you're in a really good uh, stead for the rest of the day. Uh, so if you attend an early morning mass, you see the benefits uh, throughout the day. You started up here, uh, which is which is great. Which is great. Um, my soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. So we just mentioned how uh, it's um, we have a thirsting for God. Um, so we have a, like a hunger. We have a desire, though, and and we'll be filled. Christ said very clearly. Uh, he who comes to me will not hunger, and uh, I'll give you the living water, so you, you will not be thirsty again. So we see that Messiah kind of aspect there, and Christ as well on the cross, he said he was thirsty. And again, I, I don't think, uh, I'm, pretty, I'm, sure, uh, I'm sure most of the commentators say, it wasn't necessarily just a literal thirst. For Christ on the cross, he was physically thirsty in need of water. No, he, he, he thirsted for the salvation of people, for the salvation of, of, of mankind. So my soul is thirsting for you uh, in, 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 in the spiritual sense, not, not, not limited. Uh, I think it also includes the physical, but not limited to the physical sense of, of physical thirst or physical hunger. Uh, but it, uh, on, the lit on the literal thing, uh, we need water to live. The body is 60, 70% water. 
Okay, you don't have water, you're not alive. So water uh, is foundational to, to, to life. Uh, you need water to live and to function. Um, so uh, we, we do remember that, but Christ is the living water. Christ is the living water, and we will not thirst again. We will not thirst again. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land. I think what's important to remember is that the world is crying out for God. It's absolutely crying out in complete desperation uh, for God. And people are so hungry and thirsty for God. Where there's no God, people are empty and people are thirsty, people are hungry. Uh, Christ is the only one that can satisfy people's thirst, people's hunger. Uh, and I, I think as well, like I heard the speaker say this, is that you probably think that uh, people don't want to talk about spiritual things and not interested. But on the contrary, People are very, a lot of people are interested. They just need someone to call, to, to, to kind of like reach out to them and have a preacher. You know, it says, uh, uh, how will they hear on them if, they, if there is no preacher? So often I, I think we are misled uh, that we think people don't want to talk about spiritual things and they're not interested. But because uh, uh, we are made in the image of God, God has put eternity in our hearts. And people are, uh, the world is empty. Uh, the, the world is empty and thirsty and hungry for for peace, for satisfaction, for happiness, for joy. Uh, and that's why people need uh, to to taste this living water, taste this living water, and to eat the bread of life. Um, so and and yeah, obviously as well, it's referring to communion. Uh, my fresh longs to you, and right is the fresh is, is yeah, we partaking of the body and blood of Christ. Okay, because Christ is the living body. Uh, even in even in the translation of the the, 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 the book for the mass, they the, 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 they use in the communion. I mean, I mean, I mean, the priest says, I mean, I mean, I believe, I believe, I believe, confess a lot. This is life giving body or flesh, or flesh, life giving body or flesh. Um. Verse 3, so I've looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and glory. Uh, and yeah, we turn to God, we turn to God to find this uh, living water, to find this living, uh, um, the, the life-giving body uh, in the house of God. Uh, we, could, we could also add that fasting is part of this uh, because if, if fish, um, you know, we, we need, uh, we're, 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 we're thirsty for God. That's why we're willing, and we're talking about the spiritual sense more than the physical. We, we want to fast, fast to gain the spiritual. Uh, why do we fast? You get this question, why do we fast? The short answer, Christ fasted, probably more extended answers, many answers, but you would include that we believe that spiritual is more important than the physical. So we're willing to fast and give up something temporal for something eternal. We're willing to give up our physical thirst for the eternal thirst. We need to give a, a physical hunger for a turn on. It's not easy, but uh, it's a greater, it's, it's, it's much greater and, and it's everlasting and more satisfying and it tastes a lot better. And that's why you'll see, you'll see in the next uh, couple of verses, talks about how uh, the, 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 the living, uh, the eternal, uh, uh, you know, eternal thirst, eternal uh, hunger uh, and, and the spiritual is much more important, it's much tastier than the physical. Because your love and kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. That's how I bless you while I live. So, uh, the, the, the Christ, uh, having Christ, it's, 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 it's that this is life. This is real life. People outside of that, lifeless, as, 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 as Christ said. Uh, you, have me, you have no life in you outside of Christ. And these are just um, verses to make it more concrete. Um, verse 1 John 5. And this testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He who has the son has life. He does not have the son of God does not have life. Very clear. These things are written to you believe in the name of the son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. 
So yeah, I think that's uh, very important to keep in mind. Um, <clears throat> next couple of verses. Thus I'll bless you, I'll lift, lift them hands in your name. Uh, so again, uh, we're seeing the physical sense, we're seeing the lifting up our hands to God. Uh, Santa Ephraim says, if you're not using the body while you're praying, you're not really, really praying. So we're using our body to, 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 to appeal to God, to, 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 to you know, stretch out our hands to God. I think I'm used to saying that uh, if you, when, when uh, we're stretching out our hands, it's a symbolic of Christ on the cross, uh, stretching out his hands for us to receive him. Uh, and again, see the Messian aspect, and uh, why the church is placed in the six-hour Akbar. Um, so we see how the posture is important. Uh, and then I think as well, uh, using our hands, is, um, lifting up our hands, it's, it's a form of praise, it's a form of surrender, like Christ as well, uh, and probably even like, like the eagerness, the anticipation of God coming to us. We want you, God. You know, we're lifting up our hands, come, come to us, please. We appear, we beg to you. So... It's, it's, it's important to um, use your body while you're praying, and we lift up our hands uh, in your name, in Christ's name. And Christ himself lifted up his hands uh, on the cross. Verse uh, 5, My soul shall be satisfied as a man in fantasy, and man shall praise you with joyful lips. The matter here is referring to, like, the, 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 the vegetable, the, the, the fresh matter. It's kind of like a zucchini. Never ate it, but you know, it's, it's, I'm not sure you can get it in Australia. But um, the matter is, it's it's it's, it's, it's something nice, it tastes not special when it's fresh. It's fresh. Um, so other the other translation talks about how like uh, it's, we're going to be satisfied with like the, the richest of foods, the richest of foods in the NIV. Mosul uh, we will be satisfied as with the richest of foods. So the top, the, the highest quality foods. Okay, we're going to be satisfied with life, but we're going to be more satisfied. It goes beyond, the, you know, even with the best foods in the whole world, most expensive, highest quality, you know, fresh off the boat, fresh off the, off out of the garden. Um, it, it, well, that's that's that satisfaction is nothing even compared to Christ satisfaction, Christ, uh, you know, eternal, eternal, uh, eternal happiness, eternal joy. It goes beyond that. A spiritual is greater than the physical. I shall praise you with your feelings. Um, I remember a story where the, I had this young kid. He said to me, uh, I asked him, so it was like probably five, six years old. So, uh, do you love God? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. How much, do, how much uh, 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 do you think, you, why do you love God? Like, how much do you think God loves you? Oh, God loves Christ. God loves me so much. Okay, he loves me this much because he died on the cross. He loves me this much. He stretched out his hand. So we take comfort. And that, that's the real side of the church. After church, we praise you with joyful lips. Um, so the six, remember on the bed, I meditate in our watches. We always try to remember in God uh, uh, during times of comfort and times of adversity. It, it's easy to remember God in times of adversity, but I think here, like the commentator is saying, verse six, remember God in times of peace or tranquility or when things are going smooth, because when you go to bed, it's it's, it's a time of peace. You know, you, you come for your own comfort. You can sleep at ease with with God, and, and you just you know, just rest. But we need to remember God in times of prosperity. Very important. Okay, uh, and that's why I said in my prosperity, I should never be moved. We don't want to ever lose sight of God. And I meditate you on the night watches. Okay, throughout the night, throughout the night. Okay, don't don't ignore God at all, especially during times of prosperity, because that's where we can easily fall into the trap. Uh, the, 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 when things are going smoothly, we don't remember God. Uh, well, what's the, the English saying? Um, uh, uh, we don't uh, we, we don't uh, see the light until we feel the heat. You know, the, when the when the pressure is on, then we start to turn to God. But you know, we don't want to do that. We want to always turn to God. On the bed, on the bed, and in the night watches. Okay, so not just in times of trouble. Uh, seven, because you're being my help, therefore in the shadow wings I will rejoice. Uh, yeah, we mentioned this in other psalms. Uh, you know, it's mentioned in other psalms in the sixth hour, I think, where we have the uh, the God's protection. 
uh, like the the bird covering covering the protecting us. Um, the shadow wings are with choice uh, because of God is our protection. Um, um, because you're being my help, uh, yeah, verse 8, my soul follows close behind you, your right hand upholds me. Uh, apparently in the Arabic translation, it's kind of like uh, gluing. You're kind of like glued to God. It's uh, it's kind of like uh, you're, you're really attached to God. Um, so so, so uh, we, we're like nailed to the cross, we're like with Christ. Um Verse nine, those seek my love. Yeah, it just talks about how uh, David's saying, uh, "Those who wanted to kill me, uh, God was my victor. God protected me. Those who seek my love to destroy it, shall go on the lower parts of the earth. The lower parts being the, um, I think, according to Saint Augustine, the the the, the last of the world. Like, you know, the 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 the, the, the flesh, the the the, the 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 inferior things, like the, the, the ones that." Uh, destroy men they are they are low they're inferior so the loss of the world um they shall fall by the sword there should be a portion for jackals uh, a jackal is really it's just it's just like a scavenger um yeah uh, the jackal really uh, does its own hunting it's more of a scavenger um but the, the god will protect us like he did to david okay uh, but the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone who swears around shall go, but the mouth of those with life shall be stopped. So we see the shift here from David. Um, it's kind of still like the worst in David. Uh, I'm looking for the sanctuary. I need your help. And then we see the shift. Uh, uh, I remember I meditated now watches because you've been my help. You see the past tense. You have been my help. Not, you know, what are you doing? Why aren't you helping me? Uh, like many of his psalms, is in the present tense. What are you doing, God? This tense is, you see, in the past tense, uh, I, I, I know you're helping me. You helped me in the past, and you've always been my help, uh, and I will rejoice, okay? Uh, and, you, and you see the present tense as well. My, your right hand upholds me. Upholds me. Um, so, yeah, I, I think we see, we see the joy of us turning to God. We see the joy in, in taking him earnestly. In in, 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 in in doing prayers earnestly, like I personally love to do the prayers early. Uh, first, that prayer is very important for me in the morning. I read the Bible in the morning. I don't read the Bible at night time. Uh, I love to do this early. And we want to seek the Lord earnestly in the beginning. We're set for the day. I love the early morning masses. Uh, I think we should do more early masses here in the monastery, but that's another story. Um, so early, what I think we start them at the beginning, and we were sincere, and we will find the comfort of God. Um, and, we, and we will be satisfied. We will be. We will feast with him. My soul shall say, as Mary of We're going to feast. It's feast. It's not like uh, low quality food or average quality food or even uh, good quality food. It's the top, the highest quality. Okay, we're satisfied with it. It's a. It's a banquet. It's ultimate feast. Um, and 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 of course the ultimate feast is communion. <laughs> it's communion. Um, yeah, which is why all the communion hymns are joyful. But you know, when they're singing during communion times, it's very joyful. And uh, some of the prayers let us give thanks to the body and word of God, which we have just partaken, and give thanks, you know, all these kind of prayers. Um, and then, and, and, and I think it's also just to, to stress again, we lift up our hands to God. Uh, see here with Psalm 1948, my hands also lift up to your commands, which I love. We, we do these things out of love because we love God. Uh, we want to pray. We want to seek a ministry. We don't do it by force, and we and uh, and 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 we're active, and we're active, and and we because we, we tasted the joy. They said the Lord is good, and we don't look back. Um, remember, we said at the title he, he when he was in the wilderness of Judah. David was in the wilderness of Judah. Uh, uh, in verse ten, apparently uh, Absalom, when he died, uh, no one like buried him. No one buried him, so it was such a dishonor. Uh, he was unburied, and yeah, yeah. And you see here the people that are not honored, there'll be a portion for jackals, which is why you see many saint stories. Uh, the body needs to be buried, it's, it's an honor, it's an honor uh, to be buried because of the righteousness of the person and God's favor towards the person. Um, I think in the story of Cosman and Demian and, and the mother. Um, uh, it, it was. I'll get that story for you. 
Yeah, here it is. So it is St. Cosme de Mian. Uh, when uh, uh, she uh, was killed, um, Yoru had to be cut off. She was kind of a, her body remained on the ground and no one dared to bury it for the fear of the emperor. St. Cosme screamed at those present, saying, Men of this city, is there not one merciful person among you who will cover the body of this poor old widow and bury her? Straight away, Victor, yeah, he did this. And he, and he was, uh, and he was the caravan. So you see the honor that uh, of the people that uh, that are uh, righteous that need to be buried, and we want to partake of this honor. And again, we want to seek the eternal, eternal physical, uh, eternal life, much more important than the spiritual, which is very, very satisfying. It's, it's joyful and it's a feast.